my 75 C10 is having an issue and let me show you what it's doing. And it's gonna start up just fine. And it's idling and I'm gonna give it some gas. And it revs just fine in park and it'll rev just fine in neutral. But when I put it into gear and I accelerate, we have an issue. I put it in drive and I give it some gas and the engine's gonna cut out and misfire. And there it was. So for some reason, this truck can rev just fine in park and neutral, but it can't accelerate without stumbling and misfiring. So some things I've checked so far, the choke is fully opening when warm, that's not an issue. I've checked the timing, it's still set at 13 degrees before top dead center. We aren't, we don't have the screw, the idle screw up way too high or anything like that. There's no vacuum leaks that I know of. Um, our PCV valve is not leaking. We're not, no huge vacuum leak there. Uh, the trans control module, the vacuum module that attaches to the TH350 trans, that is just fine, no vacuum leaks. I sprayed it with starting fluid or brake fluid and it connects into the port back there. So it, it doesn't appear like we have any vacuum leaks or anything. This truck ran and worked perfectly and then the, the next day it just didn't. So when I give it gas, you'll see two squirts from the accelerator pump. Hopefully you saw that. They both work, they're both squirting so it's not a bad accelerator pump or anything like that. The most common thing someone's going to say about a fuel problem on an old classic truck, or really any class vehicle, is the fuel sock inside of the gas tank could be clogged. That's a good possibility. If I didn't have this hard line here, because this is all one hard line all the way up to the mechanical fuel pump, I could put in a fuel pressure gauge and check, see if we're losing pressure or anything, but... Um, the hard line it's just more difficult and I don't want to cut this up because I like the hard line. Alright here we have the cap taken off the distributor, taking the coil off right now. Here's the cover. Set this aside. And now a few more screws and then I'll pull this cover out and show you the damage that I found. So with the coil off, we're not going to look at this one because that was a temporary coil I put on. but. Here you can see the plastic is burnt on the distributor cap itself. The underside you can see the burn marks. So this cap is bad and this terminal right here is a little loose. I mean not a big deal but it's all kind of adding up and it's just time to get a new cap. This cap is burnt through, went under load and the engine spinning harder. The spark is going where it shouldn't be, so all this burnt plastic in here, it's pretty, pretty crazy. So here is the coil out of the Corvette. This is the coil out of the truck, the C10, and you can see this is just crispy and burnt up. So I believe the rubber is supposed to provide insulation so the spark can travel or the current can travel where it's supposed to. With this happening, it's not going where it's supposed to be. And inside the truck here, you can see the rotor is has all the black marks too. Um, now that might, thinking about it now, that might just be residue. It, the rotor might, might actually not be bad. But they're cheap enough. I think it's time to just do a complete overhaul. Let's get a new rotor, new cap. Uh, we got an issue module for this because I think that's what was causing everything to burn up as well as the old coil that was in here. Probably especially the old coil. So with the two quarter inch bolts loosened, this lifts right off. Here we have the rotor. And it looks like it's mostly residue, but might as well just replace it, refresh it. Here we have the springs that seem to be looking good, but this yellow thing is the ignition control module. We want to replace that as well because that could have been damaged from the coil being bad. And here we have the ignition control module pulled out. It's the four wire one. You can see a little bit residue of this 
It's supposed to be like a heat sink compound thermal paste, kind of like what you put on computers, on the CPUs. There's not really much of it, and it's dried up, so I wonder if this was a wrong material or just didn't put enough, but we'll get those replaced. I got to order up a cap, though. New coil's been added. Put some thermal paste under it, and it's good to go. Probably going to try to crimp those back wires on just a little bit tighter because they're a little bit loose aftermarket problems. Got the new parts, so quick side by side. Look how massive this hole is compared to this. Wild how much it actually ate out of the cap here. But we got a new rotor, let's throw everything together. Got the new cap all assembled with the coil in. This is a new coil and got it all wired up. Put the ground around this coil so that's back in. It has two grounds, it's a little overkill but perfectly fine. And we are good to go. Realized now, I probably should have got um, the cover that is the correct matching color. Because now it stands but out, but oh well. At least it will run. New cap rotor, ignition coil, ignition module, all that's all put back together. And if you can see the tape I put on the spark plugs, I did that to label them so I can visually see which one's which put it back together and of course I had like three of them off so it was running horribly and took a break came back to it next day figured it out so I have them labeled correctly now and now this truck is definitely a, a work truck more function than show so it doesn't look pretty but it gets the job done and it helps diagnosing so let's put the air cleaner back on let's take this for a drive test drive gone successful it has plenty of power again, and it's not hiccuping or anything. I would call this a success. So after almost a complete distributor rebuild, just a distributor tune-up, if you will, we're back in business. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.